Caleb Omolo. I'm the leader of uh, Permaculture Farmers Group in Rongo District, Migori County. We were introduced to uh, a technology of shade, uh, of netting system, which we, con we consulted the ACP and we got Dr. Uh, Martin, uh, who we asked, like, we were having really, really bad problems with uh, pests and also, like, rain, hail, when we grow our things, like, we, when it rains, uh, the rain just, you know, washed everything away. Then, uh, you know, Dr. Martin came with, uh, you know, to advise us and he said, yes, the solution uh, for the smallholder farmers will be a netting system. And I said, how does it work? And, uh, you know, we had a discussion and uh, a few weeks later, he brought the, shed, the net, netting system and uh, we applied it. And uh, within a few months, oh, most of our problems were solved. So, like, uh, I would highly, highly recommend a netting system for a smallholder farmers. Uh, because, like, in Rongo here, you can see the, the land is getting smaller and smaller. And we are, we are faced with a lot of you know, different kinds of pests and, uh, you know, diseases. So, when you have a controlled... Uh, type of farming in like 8 by 20 uh, where you can you know plant enough vegetables and so many different uh, perennials where you can harvest all year round so the, the the netting system technology is the answer for a smallholder farmers for several reasons one you avoid the you know uh, environmental and uh, calamities like hail when a few weeks ago we had a very very bad hail system here and uh, for years we, you know since uh, the global warming started many smallholder farmers were really really suffering from either a severe drought hail system or diseases which uh, and several insects but with a controlled uh, environment in the netting system you avoid and you save a lot of money. The best example is uh, spraying. You don't have to spray for any insect because all the insects are outside. So you will save a lot of money in spraying. And also, when it's going to like heavy wind, you don't have to worry about like, you know, wind loss. When there's a heavy hail, you don't have to worry about, oh, all my crops gonna get wiped by hail is controlled so the only thing is like a small investment and also it's very very easy to adapt and also to fix you can uh, make it and fix it yourself so you get very 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 good crops the crop gets everything it needs plus all the nutrients without any interruption so like this is the solution for the future and you know because of the global warming and also because of our population you can uh, easily being a permaculturist. Uh, so here we have several crops, in, crops intercropped, intercropped together. We interplant them together. Mm. So we have kale. Mm. This is kale. Mm. This is spring onion. And then this is black nightshade. Mm. The reason we intercrop them together first is to confuse the pests. Mm -hmm. So then they don't know which one to attack. Mm -hmm. So that increases your yield. Mm -hmm. And then other crops are also used as biopesticides, especially mm. like the spring onions, they are repellent. Oh, you, you can cut the leaf uses as a pesticide to mm. spray on crops, okay. or you can just plant them and the okay. smell okay. repels the crop. It acts like Mer Mexican marigold, it has the same same effect as Mex Mexican marigold. So the, the nightshade is actually the local breed okay. and it's very resistant to several diseases and that's mm. why it does well here. Mm. Uh, yeah, as I said, the reason for intercropping is to first confuse mm -hmm. the pests and also to have a variety of food. In permaculture, we promote food security and mm -hmm. nutrition. So if you put very many crops together, mm -hmm. then you have a choice. Normally, when you intercrop, you only have one choice. Mm -hmm. But when you put so many of them, then you can... Today, you can choose to eat girls. Tomorrow, black night shed. The other day, other, other, other crops. So that is the main reason pest control and also having so like variety you it will solve the netting system is able to solve our nutritional uh, deficiency 
before the netting system we were just we could not afford to grow any vegetable because it will be washed out we people were like forced to do monoculture which is corn and uh, for, so people diet was really really devastated because uh, we, we the vegetables were so expensive now we are able to grow enough vegetable to eat and all to, also to sell in the market so the future is uh, in uh, in the netting system and uh, we are very very glad for the U USAID who funded uh, ISIPE to bring us this technology and and uh, um, I would really really recommend it to smallholder farmers and we are hoping to that this technology can you know really expand to several places apart from Rongo alone because it is the, it's, it's the future so I would uh, like to uh, let my counterpart, you know, say a few words about, you know, what he thinks about the netting system. Paul. <coughs> and also, okay, in terms of, uh, of uh, acquisition of money for farmers to buy the structures, we felt that if farmers can be able to access probably loans, huh? yeah, so that they can be able to, to, purchase, to, purchase, the, to purchase the netting, and uh, the wooden can come from locally available material. Uh, then after, after some time, after they've started harvesting, now they can be able to repay the loan so that they are given maybe a grace period of four months. After four months, now they can be able to, to repay the loan either at once or they can be able, it, can be able, it can be splitted so that they can pay even, let's say, within, within three months. And also we're feeling that things that should be included is training so that... Uh, uh, okay, the, the, the company that sells net for us can be able to include costs like for training and also for, for testing, for soil testing, so that they give us as a package. No, 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 not that we buy the structure, then the farmers themselves go and source for services like, uh, like soil testing and also for training. So they can include that as a package so that when they give us the price of the whole structure, that is the net, they also include the, the cost of the, of, of, of the soil testing and also for the training. But generally what I can say, the farmers are really positive and they're really willing to invest in greenhouse technology because by observation they've seen a lot of uh, improvement as far as uh, the structure is concerned. Uh, they can be able to appreciate, even if you brought them here, they can be able to see the control and the, the, the crops that have been planted inside. And, uh, and they'll tell you that the crops that have been planted inside are, high, high, uh, are, are, of, are uh, having high quality uh, in terms of uh, the appearance and also the quantity will be higher after they have harvested. Thank you.